that's the same for that one. Clarinetists are full of nightmares. The nightmare was about being cold. The other one is of coming on without your music reading spectacles and not being able to climb back through the scaffolding to get them. So <laughs> and now I've come on with being able to see the music for this half. The first piece really needs no introduction. And 
just so happened that um, the, the barn dance was imported from um, the United States then, uh, over from America, and became very popular. And this skirt dance fitted the barn dance. And uh, just through that pure chance, it's remained as the one piece, virtually one piece we know of looks uh, today. Well, we move on to another piece, uh, Bill Bailey. This is one of those James Power arrangements that I was telling you about in the first half. Um, Bill Bailey, Won't You Please Come Home is the full title, uh, written in 1902 by uh, Huey Cannon. It's a, become a standard Dixieland and traditional jazz band um, piece. Uh, if you hear the words at all, it's usually the chorus, although there's lots, lots, lots of verses. But, um, I'll just remind you of the, uh, here's actually the first verse. One summer's day, the sun was shining fine. The lady love of old Bill Basic, Bailey was hanging clothes on the line in her backyard and weeping hard. She'd married a B&O brakeman that took and throwed her down. Bellering like a prune-fed calf with a big gang hanging round. And to that crowd, she yelled out loud, won't you come home, Bill Bailey? Won't you come home? And she moans the whole day long. I'll do the cooking, darling. I'll pay the rent. I knows I've done you wrong. Remember that rainy evening that I drove you out with nothing but a fine tooth comb? I know I's to blame. Well, ain't that a shame? Bill Bailey, won't you please come home?
does not get her father's permission to marry her beloved. She is, however, having a bit of a hissy fit because she has no intention of carrying that out at all. Only a rabino.
the um, interchange again, we need to get the clavier over, off, we need to get the whole orchestra back on, so there'll be a break of a few minutes, which will be an ideal time for you to fill out the feedback forms that you have with your programmes. Uh, and when you've done that, you could, at the end, uh, as you're leaving, maybe leave them on the desk on the way out, or if you prefer, hand them to me or somebody else, uh, uh, from one of the church audience and so on. So, uh, bear with us for a few minutes, please.
programme for this afternoon. Would you like one more? Yes. With the singer, perhaps? Yes. Okay then. See what we can do.
afternoon. The Thanet Light Orchestra, of course, the Thanet Clarinet Quartet, and obviously Christine for your contributions. It's been absolutely wonderful, and uh, I'd like to, in those thanks, thank Ben as well, Ben Jones, who many of you know here as our resident organist, but has organised uh, this afternoon as well. And it's been absolutely splendid. I'm sorry we've had many repeats of the heating, but you can see all this is work in progress. I must admit it's not to do with the heating, with scaffolding, but there is a lot of work going on. And we are the envy of a lot of local parishes in our fundraising that we're able to undertake to finance projects such as this. And it's from you folks attending these wonderful concerts and the other things that we have, the open gardens, and the next thing in a fortnight we've got a charity day here in church uh, on a Saturday throughout the day. So our, our many thanks to everybody. Uh, those uh, events that are listed in the program you've got are coming on. We've got the Canterbury Singers here uh, as listed in the early part of December. Simon 